During the mid-19th century, in Yanshan County, Hubei, Sanjo, a boy named Li Shu Wen is born into a rich culture of martial arts. Two styles of the arts, Baji, the eight extremes boxing, and Pigua, the split and suspended palm, were once taught in tandem as complementary to one another. History had caused these two styles to split apart, with their respective masters living between the villages of Meng and Luo. It is Li Shu Wong, a prodigy in the martial arts, who finds himself studying both styles once more, traveling between Jian Diang Shang in Meng and Huang Si Hai in Luo. Among these styles, it is the Eight Extremes Boxing, or Baji Chuan, that he becomes famous for. It is a style that encourages striking an opponent with the smallest amount of movement possible, taking the shortest path. Very early on, he demonstrates extraordinary talent in his practice. Despite his small stature, he is both brave and skilled, never losing a single match. Baji Chuan, in addition to being a style of hand-to-hand -hand combat, also involves the use of the spear. In both forms, Li Xuan proves himself deadly. His skill with the spear earns him the nickname God of the Spear. While his fists are known to be so powerful, he almost never fails to defeat his opponent in a single strike. His style is such that, rather than learning 1,000 different techniques, he masters a single one, a fist so strong that no second strike is ever necessary. Naturally, he becomes a master in his own right, gathering already remarkable martial artists who seek to improve under his tutelage. Among these students is Liu De Quan, who travels to Tianjin for the opportunity to experience Li Xu Wen's spear techniques firsthand. Through sparring, Liu is astounded by how Li handles his longer, heavier spear like a mere candlestick. In admiration, Liu admits defeat and becomes Li's student. The following spring, another weapons expert, Yan, visits in search of a chance to fight Li Xu Wen. After losing in two bouts, Yan requests a third chance to redeem himself, only for Li to warn him that he'll be injured if they fight once more. Sure enough, as they stubbornly battle, Li sneaks through Yan's defenses and taps his left eye. Even Li's most gentle attack is enough to earn him victory. Following tradition, Yan remarks that he'll return in three years for a rematch. This excites Li, who spends his time improving even further. Despite this enthusiasm, Li is disappointed when Yan never returns. Though Li Shu Wen has never been bested in combat, there is one time where he has ended a fight in a draw. In a demonstration toward their students, Li Shu Wen and his Shaolin peer, Gao Hu Chen, engage in light sparring. The two men respect each other, with Li being especially eager to fight a worthy opponent. Before Li can deliver a winning blow, however, their fight gets broken up for being too intense. His skill is more than just innate talent. It is something he cultivates constantly through practice. He does not so much as wake in the middle of the night to relieve himself without taking the opportunity to swing his spear 50 times. He frequently challenges himself intentionally only using his left hand to maneuver his spear. Even with such restrictions, he is able to impale an indoor fly without damaging the rest of the building. Other stunts include using a precise thrust to drive nails into walls, as well as juggling a 100-pound bag of beans on the end of a staff. As a result of his strength, he is challenged by many in fights to the death. In this regard, he is ruthless confidently announcing the specific moves he will use to end his opponent's life. Over several decades, Li Xu Wen's devotion to martial arts leaves a trail of corpses in its wake. His final challenge comes when he is over 70 years old. A young man comes to him, requesting a fatal spear duel. The result is inevitable. The young man is killed, and his family holds a grudge. The family conspires to serve Li Shu Wen poison, killing him outside of combat. Still undefeated, his life is severed through underhanded means. In the aftermath, his students and successors continue to practice fighting with the spear, and he is remembered as the Demon Fist Master. This man, 
who had spent his entire life solely focused on his technique, is recorded into the Throne of Heroes, or in this case, the Moon Cell Automaton. In the modern era, the people of Earth struggle as the planet's supply of mana has been depleted. Over 60% of the land is owned by a single family, the Harveys. The Harvey conglomerate uses its power and influence to shape the world order, maintaining its dominance by employing assassins to take care of their rivals. The family's heir is a boy named Leo, born under his mother Alicia and the family's head. While Leo is made heir, he is not the eldest son. Rather, the Harveys have an illegitimate child, Julius B. Harvey, conceived as a designer baby with altered DNA. The family tries to birth him with superior magic circuits, only to discover that, before he's even left the womb, he is defective. He's discarded like trash, but manages to survive through willpower and persistence. Testing his abilities, the Harveys surgically remove his kidney without anesthetics in order to measure his pain index. Deemed a failure, Julius is denied being heir to the family, and at the age of six, that title is instead gifted to his newborn brother, Leo. Despite not being her biological child, Alicia shows Julius the same love she shows for Leo. The next three years serve as the only time Julius is ever able to live a normal life. However, for being a failure to the family, he is made into one of the assassins, with his very first target being none other than Alicia. Through family politics, assassinating Alicia will secure Leo's inheritance, and Julius' father has chosen him to complete the task. On a moonless night, without much choice, Julius slowly walks to Alicia's room. He stands beside her bed and takes one last look at his mother, a kind woman with beautiful long hair. At the very least, he can see she is calm and peaceful in her slumber. Hoping not to wake her, he attempts to pull the trigger of his handgun. Before he can finish the job, Alicia stirs to give one final request. She asks Julius to take care of Leo for her before accepting death at gunpoint. Killing Alicia secures his worth to the family, but at the same time, he honors her request, always keeping an eye on Leo. Regardless, the Harveys subject Julius to further experiments, which rapidly age his body into that of an adult. From the shadows, he accepts his role as an assassin, earning the name Black Scorpion. As a replacement for Earth's mana, mages become Spiritron hackers and take refuge in the Moon Cell, seeking to take control of its core. When the Harveys determine that the Moon Cell core, hailed as the Holy Grail, is a threat to them, they dispatch Leo as a participant in the Moon Cell Holy Grail War, with Julius as his bodyguard. However, because Julius himself lacks magic circuits, he cannot fulfill his duty as a master. To function as one, his servant is summoned for him, and in the Moon Cell, he hacks the profile of a teacher, Soichiro Kuzuki. Using borrowed power, Julius obtains the assassin class servant, Li Shu Wun, and works in secret to ensure Leo's victory. While Li Shu Wun's primary class is that of a lancer, he accepts the role of assassin on his master's behalf, using his fists to eliminate Leo's potential rivals. In either case, he is simply happy to have another chance to fight strong opponents. In battle, despite being an assassin servant, Li Shu Wun lacks the presence concealment skill. Instead, he uses meditative chi to perform the sphere boundary technique, which allows him to be one with nature and the universe, rendering him invisible to his enemies. Without a weapon, Li's entire fighting style becomes his noble phantasm. In this case, his god spear, no second strike, through which he engulfs his enemy in chi from a single hit, sending them into circulatory shock disrupting the flow of mana between master and servant. Among all the formidable masters of the Holy Grail War, such as Rin Tosaka, Julius is most concerned with a seemingly inept participant, Hakuno Kishinami. From the very beginning, 
Julius is able to tell that Hakuno poses the greatest threat. Thus, it is fortunate that Julius is paired to fight Hakuno in the fifth round before his brother. Rather than aiming for a fair fight, Julius and Li Shu Wun hide in the shadows to try and murder Hakuno in the days leading to their official bout. However, with the help of Rin Tosaka, Hakuno is able to survive and even learn about Julius and his servant. Come time for their match, Hakuno speaks to Julius and pries out sensitive information on his past. This helps Hakuno win the match. Lee accepts defeat, but his master does not. As Julius is being deleted by the Moon Cell's firewall, he screams out, resisting deletion, and manages to escape as a ghost in the arena, driven by hatred. He feels a sense of irritation in his similarity to Hakuno, who has also built themselves up from nothing. Still trying to halt Hakuno, Julius expands a reality marble and sends Li Shu Wun to fight as a Berserker class servant using the stolen command seals of another master. As a Berserker, Li uses a secret technique. Fierce Tiger forcibly climbs a mountain to land a series of consecutive attacks strong enough to tear through sturdy gates. Despite his assassination attempts, Hakuno winds up learning of Julius' past and cries on his behalf. Julius, on the verge of inevitable deletion, is pleased to have someone else care about him. With a smile, Julius disappears, hoping to reunite with Alicia in the afterlife. In a separate universe, the Caldea Security Organization struggles to avoid humanity's incineration by resolving singularities opened throughout history. In a bizarre singularity containing North America, American servants fight against an invasion of Celtic warriors led by Queen Maeve. Li Shu Wun finds himself a part of this singularity, finally in his appropriate Lancer form. He does not take sides in the conflict and instead seeks out strong opponents, the strongest of which happens to be Skahach, guardian of the Celtic underworld. In exchange for the chance to duel such an impressive spearmaster in a battle to the death, Li Shu Wun agrees to help out Caldea's forces. Thanks to his spear, Li's technique, no second strike, now has a broader range, which he uses to fight Skahach just as the singularity collapses. The result going untold. He is later summoned by Caldea's master, Ritsuka Fujimaru, to help fight the demon god hive mind Getia ultimately saving humanity. Even after claiming victory, however, anomalies still occur within the fragmented remains of deleted timelines through quantum time lock. These timelines form lost belts, which Caldea must also deal with. In one of these lost timelines, Li Xu Wun lives to his senior years. During the Qin Dynasty, he serves their first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, by training personal guards. At this age, he is a gentle man, only using his deadly fists when absolutely necessary. Regardless, he still bears the same sharp fangs he had in his younger years. Thanks for watching! If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and most of all, smashing that notification bell as if it were your waifu. That way you'll never miss out on all of my anime content, lore videos, live streams, and Holy Waifu Wars polls. My vids are struggling to get featured, so that bell is absolutely critical. If you want to support me directly, check out my Patreon, or consider donating via Super Chat. And as always, celebrate your fandom!